many students feel quite uncomfortable when writing their first research paper. Throughout their educations, they've often been allowed just to include information in their school papers without even saying where they got the information. Or they will just write a paragraph and at the end just write Google or Wikipedia, leaving it unclear whether they did any of their own thinking within that paragraph. Now, responsible citizens are going to follow careful standards when they uh, are repeating the information that they find. And you got to remember, we're living in a world of lies where people like to spread things in order to manipulate people or to promote their agenda or grind some acts. So you need to know that if you're spreading something online that's uh, not credible, you're adding to the problem of a world we live in. So we all need to help to make sure that we have good standards for information. Okay? So our research paper is designed to teach students how to make clear where you, you have your own thinking in the paragraph, what came from some source, and how can your reader tell what that source is and find it, to verify it. Because anything in your paper needs to be verifiable. So there are three ways to see if information is good. Here's kind of a little test for you. Check the source. Now, one way to check the source is you can go on to Wikipedia. You can go to Snopes. So, PolitiFact, Snopes, Wikipedia, these are organizations that do fact checking. And you need to use these if you go to a website that you don't know and you're not sure if they have some kind of bias okay, or some kind of political agenda. Now, here's an example of Wikipedia. So a lot of people like to watch OAN, which is One America News Network. And I like a lot of people in my family like to watch it. And the thing is, a lot of uh, people worry about where you're getting news, whether or not it's biased. Uh, some people say you can uh, go on to other uh, websites, such as uh, MSNBC there'd be a bias. This one, it is it objective or not? Now, Wikipedia has people who fact check, and according to them, this is right from the Wikipedia page, it said that it's known for promoting falsehoods and conspiracy theories. So that would mean that you might have some question marks about how reliable that website is. So equally important to the reliability and accuracy of your sources is you want to make sure you attribute those sources in your paragraph and make it crystal clear so that you don't plagiarize. And so anything that's not just common knowledge or that you didn't think of yourself, you need to say in your paragraph where you got the information and you need to quote them directly. At the end of your essay, you'll have a proper works cited page with the full bibliographical information. That's one of the things we're learning here. If you ever end up going to school after high school, you're going to have to know how to do this. So we want you to be well prepared. Now, you know, if you plagiarize a source without putting the words in quotation marks and just putting a link at the end of your essay, that is not sufficient. And we're going to have to reject that. That is not high school level work, okay? None of these bad habits will be acceptable for our research paper or for any students who want to go to VC or some other college or trade school someday, it's not acceptable. The fact is the time has come to properly, re properly learn how to um, cite your sources and attribute where you got your information. It's going to feel a little awkward at first, but I'm going to guide you through the process. Now, here in this slide, you can see uh, the, the student has not given proper attribution or citation and they're paraphrasing instead of directly quoting which also results in plagiarism and they just at the end of their paragraph they put wikipedia which is not a proper citation they're 
millions and millions of articles on Wikipedia. So which one was it? He didn't say. And as you can see, the only part that they actually quoted here was the words dining table. But do we really think that this was all written by the student? Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on earth above sea level, is in an area of the Himalayas uplifted by the crustal folding due to India colliding with Asia. How do you know that? And are those your words? Plagiarism. Rejected. Everest, which had its first verifiable human ascent in 1954, was well known as a destination for mountain climbers. Again, I question whether the student knew that or wrote that on her own without plagiarism. So we have no idea what part of this paragraph came from the student's own mind uh, or from their own thinking. So if, now if the student didn't do any of her own thinking in this paragraph, then the paragraph cannot stand. It's just been ripped off from Wikipedia. Okay, so the language here reflects very little original thought. And I think you can see why we would have to reject this as the student really not doing his or her own work. Would you like to see an improved version of a student who handled this a little bit better? Let's take a look. So notice here I've highlighted the proper way to indicate where you've actually used information that did not come from your own mind. So notice those two magic words right here in the middle of the paragraph according to Wikipedia's page on Mount Everest. And then notice they actually have the article title from Wikipedia cited right here. And then they introduce another Wikipedia article, which is titled Himalayas. So they're citing two different sources here in this paragraph, making crystal clear. Okay, and they're actually quoting. And you can see they're actually quoting here from the article using the quotation marks. They've got a couple quotations. Now, IBID means that this came from the same source that they just mentioned. But since the next quote is coming from the other source, they have to go back and put the full citation instead of IBID. And IBID is just Latin. It just means from the same place. So that's from the Himalayas article. But then they went back and quoted again from the Mount Everest article. But we have some of the students' own ideas here. Feel free to pause the uh, slideshow, and you can see, if you want to read this more carefully, how the student put their own opinion here, in addition to making crystal clear what came from their reading. So this would be an example of a paragraph that would pass no problem. Now here would be the end of the student's essay, they would have a works cited page which would have the title of the article or the author followed by the website, the company that made the website, the date it was last modified or published, the URL web address, and then the date that the student accessed it. So that's the order, and that's the one you're going to have to follow. And then these are in alphabetical order. H comes before M. So this would be the works cited page at the end of the essay with the full citation. But you'd only have the author's last name or the article title in quotation marks there in the middle of the paragraph with the rest of this citation put at the end. Okay? So we've seen a paragraph that has better focus, clearly indicates where it got its specific information, made some comments about the cited facts, and even finished with a call to action. And the in-text citations are keyed to the first words in the full bibliographical citation at the end of the essay. Now, when doing your essay and your research, make sure you take notes so that you will remember for your works cited page the author's name, the article title, the title of the website, the sponsoring organization, and the date it was published, and the web address. So we've given all of that. Again, here is an example from this Wikipedia article. Now, how do you start the essay? Well, your first paragraph needs to have the following parts. Don't say what you're going to be saying in the essay. Don't say, in this essay, I will talk about. That, is, that makes you sound like you're in sixth grade. Okay. So to sound more mature, 
start off by defining key terms, okay? Clarify the essay subject and provide some interesting background so the reader has an actual reason to be interested and then make some kind of a claim or a call to action so that you're actually having some kind of a purpose for this for the information that you're presenting. And if your opening paragraph has these four parts to it and it's clear, heck, it's going to be a great opening paragraph. Let's take a look at an example of a very poor opening paragraph here in the next slide. In my essay, I will be talking about Mount Everest as a popular mountain climbing destination because it is the highest mountain. The essay will talk about how the high numbers of Everest climbers are causing the trails to be too crowded and for there to be lots of trash and even dead bodies. I think this is wrong. The essay will point out the environmental costs for this, including pollution from trash and human feces. It will go on to discuss how the glory is really false because it is local paid guides who do most of the work helping climbers to succeed. These people bring the tents, the ropes, and even the food that climbers need. There's also a lot of money to be made by charging people money to do this feat. Another point that will be discussed. So, you know, it's the students making the subject clear, the students actually taking a stand. So definitely the students doing some of those things that we do want to see in an opening paragraph, right? Uh, they've, they've defined some of their issues there. But it doesn't sound very mature because the student is saying what they're going to say. So don't, again, say what you're going to talk about. So would you like to see a better way to handle this? Let's take a look. Let's look at a, an improvement. So the same essay, this is after the student worked with me to learn how to make it sound more mature. Mount Everest suffers the indignity of seeing its flanks strewn with litter, human waste, and even dead bodies, all due to people's vanity. Critics feel there is no good reason for climbing Mount Everest other than someone fulfilling a selfish bucket list. Diminishing the sought for glory of attaining, attaining the summit is the fact that local guides maintain the routes and ropes and also haul most of the needed equipment and prepare the food. The climbers themselves don't even have to manage the thin atmosphere if they are among the many who bring their own bottled oxygen, which purists see as cheating. Maybe there are just some places where humans should not insert themselves, and Mount Everest is one of them. True environmentalists oppose such adventures in the name of glory. However, the local Nepalese government apparently greatly needs the substantial money it gets for the licenses it issues to climb the mountain. Notice how much more mature this sounds. It covers a lot of the same ground, but actually ends up being able to develop it a little bit further because they didn't waste time talking about what they're going to talk about. Okay? Now, body paragraphs. You got a great opening paragraph. What do you do next? I suggest take 15 or 20 minutes and make a little bullet list like this um, for each of your four or five body paragraphs. And you want to use Roman numerals for the main topic of the body paragraph. Capital letters for subtopics and then the more nitty-gritty you get you can use numbers and smaller letters as shown in this example this is the standard collegiate and high school way to outline an essay using this structure so here's a an example on an essay saying that drugs should be legalized and this one paragraph makes the claim that legalizing drugs would reduce crime rates. So you can see how they've planned their paragraph. And if you were the student writing this essay, you'd have a pretty easy time writing this paragraph. They've plugged in some statistics that they're going to cite. They know exactly what they're going to do in that paragraph because they planned it. They took five minutes, figured this out. Writing that's going to be really easy. Okay. so. Maybe make a, a few notes on this slide to help you see how you can also plan your body paragraphs. I've shown you how to do the opening paragraph, what it needs to contain. Your body paragraph, you, remember, you need to have 
three sources cited in this essay. So that should be happening in the body paragraphs. And that's where you also add your details. Now remember, writing the essay doesn't have to be scary or daunting. And at any point along the way, if you need help moving forward, just simply ask and I will help you to make good progress and we'll get past that hurdle. Okay, I will always show you how to do the next step if you just reach out. I promise this is going to be way easier than you might imagine. All right, let's get started.